Hello, welcome back. So this is one I've been wanting to do for a while. I've had a few in my series of Blueprinting 101, um, amongst some other things there, but I wanted to be able to do one about CodeStream. Um, so this is really just an intro to CodeStream, CodeStream 101, the first video of a series that I'm going to do. This session, I'm just going to highlight the, uh, just an overview. I guess is probably the best way to put it. Overview of CodeStream, my thoughts, you know, how people use it, those sort of things. So, look, at the end of the day, CodeStream is just another pipelining tool. You know, I use it very heavily um, uh, for, for DevOps, DevSecOps, pipelines um, in a lot of customers. But to me, when I go in, like, pipelines is almost a religious debate. Uh, in in a lot of organizations. So it's almost like naming conventions. And I don't know if anyone has ever been in those workshops where you're trying to come up with a naming convention. Um, people that don't have a say for years and years and years and years automatically are very passionate about what it should be. And no one can ever agree, right? <laughs> it always ends up almost ending in blows. Um, and, and pipeline's almost the same thing, right? Uh, and so... I, at the end of the day, when, when when I go in and I see customers, and this anyone who knows me, right, is that I always pick the right tool for the right job. Uh, and if, if a customer's already using a pipelining tool and they're happy with it and everything's working well, then great, just keep using it. Um, now, there is there is obviously pros and cons, is that if, you, if you've got, uh, you know, you've got virilized automation, it's doing your governance and your, your multi-cloud management, um, uh, especially important for those large enterprise organizations uh, is that you go, okay, well, how do, how do I integrate that with my pipeline, right? And obviously you can write an integration, VRA's API first, you know, you can you can write your own stuff, but that's just, that's just writing your own technical debt at the end of the day, uh, and you've got to maintain that and everything going forward. So I like uh, a combination, either or, right? Um, you know, sometimes you might have a, a parent-child uh, pipelining system where you would go, hey, you know, when I commit my code, it's going to execute pipeline X in, you know, product X, uh, and it's going to go through to a certain point, but when it hands off to um, the, the deployment of infrastructure or the deployment of services or whatever it is that, you know, it, it requires to continue, is then it would hand over to, say, CodeStream. Right, it would actually make one call to CodeStream, um, and CodeStream would then use its native integrations to VRA blueprints, TKG, all those sort of things, um, do what it needs to do, then it hands it back. Right, so th there is some really cool ways you can do it, but I'm just going to look over. This is what CodeStream is today. Uh, this is the latest version, 8.7 on prem. Obviously, you do have the cloud version as well, they're basically identical. Um, and yeah, I'll just go through what it has. You know, th there isn't much to it, so it, it's pretty easy. Uh, so what I'll what I'll look at is we've got. We'll start with the triggers. So how do we? How can we trigger a pipeline, right? So there's there's Docker triggers. So essentially, it just uses Webhook now. I haven't got it integrated. So for instance, if I was to update a container, it would trigger a pipeline to maybe go and do some testing, do whatever it needs to do, right? So it's looking for that. And this actually will set up the webhook for you. So for Git, for instance, I've got I've got Git webhooks here, uh, but essentially as you set that up here, it will actually, um, because you've already set up the endpoint uh, for Git, and I'll get to endpoints in a minute, uh, but you'll already set up the endpoint, it's already got authentication and knows how to connect to it, it'll actually set up the webhook on the Git end or on the Docker end uh, to be able to then it with the right permissions to be able to call VRA, right? Oh, CodeStream, sorry, uh, to be able to do. So very, you know, very simple. And there's also Garrett. Um, I know a few people look, that have Garrett, um, but yeah, uh, not too many in the customers that I work with that actually use it, but it's there and it's available, right? Now, endpoints uh, is probably the biggest one. And this is where you go and set up all your different endpoints. So you can see I've got you know, I've got quite a few there. Uh, there's a lot of good, you know, I would say best of breed native integrations. Uh, so I can, I'll just pick my project here. Uh, and you can see we've got, we've got Bamboo, we've got Docker, Docker Registry, Email, Garrett, Git, Jenkins, Jira, uh, Kubernetes, uh, TFS, and VRO. Now, if you go to Git, you actually get additional things. So it supports GitHub, GitHub Enterprise, GitLab, GitLab Enterprise, Bitbucket, Bitbucket Enterprise, right? Um, 
so you can you can set up all those uh, with your different authentication types. Obviously, I'd probably recommend Token, but uh, it, it's it's all available for you there. Um, so it's got a lot of good out of the box integrations uh, that you want to use. Um, and obviously, you know, Jenkins is almost a catch all for everything. You can pretty much call anything. Uh, but yeah, it's it's all available. It's all there. Uh, now, projects is great. These all pass along. So this is this is when you start talking about, you know, when you're working in a platform is that it's got that really tight integrations. Now, while, uh, you know, VRA is really sort of three different products, you know, Cloud Assembly, CodeStream and Service Broker, the, the concept of the projects filters all the way through. So the, the AD users and groups and who have access. Now you can, when you create, uh, the, obviously when you create the projects, they all pass through. I can't really do anything here because they're created in VRA other than to set their, uh, set their type. But when we do that and we set these endpoints up, um, they're for a project, right? They're an endpoint for a project. So if you have a look at uh, Kubernetes here, we can see that it's project to project Z, right? So what this allows us to do, and this is when you do an onboarding of a project, you would set up all these endpoints based on the project, um, you know, create service accounts, users, whatever it might be, um, that can uh, connect into these endpoints. So essentially, you know, project Z can't interfere with uh, any um, Git repositories it doesn't have access to or hasn't been set up for it, right? So this is where, you, you know, you have each one of your projects can independently manage their endpoints or they can be managed for them uh, to be able to do. Obviously all mine are project, you've got a few here. You can see they've got Mark there with his tech demos. Uh, you know, he's got his um, GitLab, same GitLab that's going to, just different branch, different um, repository, those sort of things. Right, uh, and different users at the end of the day. Uh, so you don't have any of the bleeder data or any sort of uh, risk there uh, of, of doing that. Uh, variables, uh, these are, again, these are project-based uh, variables, um, meaning that, you know, if you need accounts, secrets, um, stuff like that, is that you can have these variables in here that the individual users don't know what they are, but they can use them um, for their particular project, if they're allowed to, right? Um, and they're just used as properties or inputs into a project or into a pipeline um, that you might want to use. Um, within the pipelines, pipelines are pretty good, like pretty simple. Uh, I'll just uh, create a, you know, you can go to smart templates. So here you can choose one and you'll go through and actually say we go, I want to, you know, full CRCD. You'd actually go in here, set the name, set your type, your build types, what processes, publishing, host, all these things, right? Um, you'd set it all up, and it will basically give you a, a skeleton of a blueprint with all the um, integrations and stuff that you need uh, to do that. Now, I generally just do blank uh, canvases because I like to build them myself. So. That's not the name. Yep. I'll look, I'll just do my project. Uh, I'll create a name. I'll set an icon will do. And the, no different to any other pipelining tools, right? We've got a stage, we've got our tasks, you've got parallel tasks, sequential tasks. These particular tasks can be a whole bunch of things, right? So if you look at this, we've got a Vermo Cloud template. So that's integrating with VRA and calling a, a blueprint. I still like to call them blueprints. Um, you can do a CI task, uh, so essentially uh, continuous integration task. So this actually um, will execute within a container and it spins up at runtime to do what you need to do. Right now that container, as we said here, can either be a Docker endpoint um, or it can be a Kubernetes endpoint, right? So you can do whatever you, you can run that container up in anything. I'd probably recommend Kubernetes if you've got an enterprise Kubernetes environment, uh, but a Docker Docker host will do as well, right? So it'll, um, those CI tasks will spin up on that endpoint, whatever it might be, right? So look at that, we've got the CI integration, that's great. Uh, we've got conditional, so you know, the usual sort of, you know, if this, then this, um, this equals failure, success, whatever you want it to do, um, it'll do what you want it to do based on the condition, right? Um, custom. 
custom integrations. So I'll, I'll, I'll have to get out to show you custom integrations, but I'll show you what they are. Um, essentially the same thing. They will execute and run on that same workspace endpoint, whether it's a Docker or Kubernetes endpoint, um, and it's whatever you want. It's a, It actually, uh, I think you can write in Python, uh, Node.js, PowerShell, uh, and it'll execute. You just write the integration that you want, fully custom, and uh, it'll execute it for you, right? Uh, and obviously you need different versions. Uh, user operations, so this is sort of that manual approver, um, release manager, something like that to go in. Uh, pipeline, so this is where you have nested pipelines. I use this quite heavily because, say for instance, my Selenium uh, UI testing, where it takes in what my um, what my test is and the, the Selenium endpoint and stuff like that, that's fully reusable, right? So I just call, I can call that pipeline um, and that should actually... Uh, be selenium testing there so I can call that pipeline and I can give the whole bunch of inputs right that I want uh, the next one is Kubernetes so this is if you want to do a get create apply delete uh, you want to roll back you select your Kubernetes endpoint so these again are assigned to the particular project um, that are available so again this is where those you know, the, the RBAC and the permissions and the governance and that all comes into to make sure that, you know, they're only connecting to the Kubernetes endpoints that that project should be connecting to, etc. Um, so you can do that. Uh, so I've, I've got a, uh, let's go Kubernetes on-premise. Um, I want to do an apply. Now I can do local, local uh, YAML definition there. So I can actually have the code in there if I want. Or I just go source control. And this is where you get go to the information that I want to go to my um, GitHub. This is the file path, any parameters that you need, right? So again, can call it directly out of source control. Uh, these probably should be inputs and, and I'll show you how the inputs work in a bit. Uh, but yeah, you can you can do whatever you want to do there. Uh, I For demo purposes, I usually use local definition just because it's more visually appealing. Um, you can see what it's actually running rather than me skipping between um, tabs and, and, and windows. Um, and for all these tasks too, I should mention, you can do notifications. So if I want a notification to Slack or a webhook or email or something like that, it does it. And same with rollback. Like what do I want to execute if this fails and roll it back, right? So again, this you'd have a different pipeline that you would execute to roll back any of the changes that you wanted. Uh, outside of Kubernetes, what have we got? We've got Jenkins input. Uh, so again, I've got my, I've got my Jenkins here. Uh, it's, it automatically picks up the jobs. Um, that you have any parameters that you want to input to into it uh, and yeah pretty basic uh, rest request so this is just basically there yeah, literally just rest if I want to make a rest thing I do I use this one quite heavily um, set your headers URLs uh, any you know if you're doing posts you get your payload stuff like that right so yeah, this is really cool because you don't need to write it yourself you don't need to you know have a JSON or a Python or a node or a Java or a um, you know, a curl or anything like that, just use the out-of-the-box uh, REST request. It works really, really well. Poll's another good one. Uh, so, for example, if I'm waiting for a website to come up, I've just deployed a new application via container. It's not going to be up instantly. You know, it might take, you know, 5, 10, 20 seconds, whatever it might be, depending on the hardware, depending on the resources available. It could always be different. Um, instead of writing that logic yourself, you can just go, I just want to poll this to URL. Um, and uh, do it for this many, this this is the interval, uh, and I wanna, um, what's my success criteria? So, you know, I, success criteria will be a 200 back, right, for instance, uh, and a failure on a, on a 401 or whatever it might be. So you can you can put that poll in there, which is, I've found really, really helpful. Uh, SSH, uh, again, you know, you wanna SSH to a, to a box, so you wanna do a bunch of stuff, you wanna run a script. Um, uh, all that stuff, like, yes, it's just SSH, right? So nice out of the box SSH. Uh, again, PowerShell, exactly the same thing, uh, except it's PowerShell uh, rather than SSH. And uh, VRO, obviously, you know, I'm a big fan of VRO, so you can kick off the VRO info and any workflows and inputs that you want to run. Uh, I use that pretty heavily too. Uh, TFS, so if you, if you do use TFS, you can, you can run that. Uh, and Bamboo as well. Um, to do that, so you know, lots of lots of really good uh, integrations there. Uh, you can also that while that was per task, you can do per stage rollback and notifications as well. Um, 
Now, if I actually just quickly have a look at input here, so essentially we can inject. So if you're doing a, a Git webhook and on submission of you know you know merge to master or whatever it is, um, it, it's going to automatically populate all the Git stuff or all the doc stuff or uh, Garrett stuff if it's got it, uh, or you could just go none and you can add your own parameters in there as well, right? Uh, you can give it a value, your default value, um, but obviously you can override that at input time, right? Um, and the same as VRA and everything, you know, you refer to those as, you know, dollar curly braces, uh, whatever it is. So we'll just take a quick look at a pipeline that I've done here, just a DevSecOps leaderboard one. Uh, you know, and this one, you know, this one's running another pipeline. So this actually uses the rest. Uh, if I go and uh, view this pipeline, I think, I think it uses rest and a bunch of things there. So yeah, actually is Jenkins rest custom and condition. So, you know, it uses a whole bunch, but essentially this is checking my code for vulnerabilities, uh, you using Sonokip, uh, for instance, right? So very simple to use that. Uh, and if I look back, oh, Oh, it opened another one. There we go. Um, I do build a container with Jenkins. Now, actually, what I'll I use I use Jenkins there, but I have replaced them. I have got one exactly the same, which replaces Jenkins with CI tasks, just to give you you know a bit of an idea. So you know I've got Jenkins to build the container. I then deploy the Kubernetes, and we can see I've got that there, and I'm using input for container name and app and all the rest of it, um, even to create the image. Right, my container registry, my input projects. So they're all inputs. So essentially this this could work um, other than the name being hard coded uh, for, for any app really. Uh, at the end of the day, any basic one. And the load balancer service there, right? Uh, I then do uh, a customer parse. I need to get the load balancer IP address. Uh, I then deploy Selenium. So I deploy Selenium um, on the fly. And I do some UI tests using Jenkins to do that. Uh, and then if that's all successful, I um, destroy Selenium in the pipeline there. Uh, and then I go to a user action for approve. And then if it approves, we clean it up and then we go to deploy um, into test, which is a different Kubernetes endpoint. Uh, and I do some locust here as well, which is a VRA blueprint. So this sort of uses a very, very broad range um, of capabilities there. If I actually have a look at the no Jenkins one, just to give you an idea, because I use a more uh, there it is. This is actually a customer request. Um, so container builds a pipeline. So let's have a look at this pipeline because again, it's reusable. I, I don't need to, it's just CI task there. And we can see that, uh, I'm doing you now again, that I should probably put this as input variables there, but that's, I haven't fully, um, parameterized it yet. Uh, but you know, I do a git clone. Uh, I, do all the Docker builds and everything else in a in a CI task, right? Uh, and that works flawlessly. Uh, push it into the push it into the registry. Uh, works great. Uh, we look, we go in, yeah, deploy Kubernetes. Great, actually. If we look at this one, I don't know if I was still using Jenkins for this one. No, I have changed it. Uh, so we can see there, I'm calling the Sonar Cube config. Um, using rest to check the gate. So you can see there I'm using rest uh, and we validate using the custom form. So I'll, I'll show you what the custom uh, ones are just a bit. Uh, we go back to here uh, and yeah, and the rest of them, uh, instead of doing the UI test, again, I'm calling a pipeline, a Maven build pipeline. Uh, so for this, you can see I'm running the test and I'm exporting the results. So I'm running the test there uh, and I'm exporting the results in the artifactory, right? So very, very flexible stuff. It's very, very cool. Uh, and you can actually see the workspace here uh, is I'm using Maven latest. So I'm actually taking the Maven um, container. So I don't have, you know, I'm not needing to have a pre-built container. Now, obviously being in an enterprise, especially if you're in an offline environment, you're gonna need your own container repository uh, to be able to hold these and, and whatnot. But yeah, so that's just, you know, what I'm using for those. So I've got all the Maven tools that are part of that container by default and just use it. So it makes it really, really simple, right? With the CI task, I don't need that Jenkins input. And that was, as I said, that was a customer requirement or customer ask saying, hey, can you do all this stuff without Jenkins? And I go, well, yeah, sure. It's just a CI task at the end of the day. All right. So yeah, that goes through and, and does a bunch of stuff. Now let's have a really, let's go back um, and look at custom integrations. 
So custom integrations, exactly what you um, would think. So look at the, you know, I'll use this secure date, secure state one here. Um, we can see I've got my runtime as Python. I've got my code. Um, I've got input properties. I've got output properties. Uh, and yeah, it will execute this, right? Uh, so let's, uh, let's have a look. If I go new custom integration, I go, we select the runtime. Oh look, it's actually got shell, sorry, not, not um, PowerShell, it's uh, just shell. Uh, but yeah, Python, Python, Node.js, uh, we'll create that. Uh, and yeah, it comes up with a default one. This is actually for Slack, I think. Uh, yeah, so it's a webhook for Slack to notify Slack. Now, that's a great little out of the box thing there. Uh, but yeah, you can, it gives you a nice idea of how you structure this um, and, and whatnot. So this will, you know, you can pretty much have anything in here and do anything. Right, nice and nice and easy. Uh, the user operations are obviously if you've got a active item that needs approval or whatnot, that's great. Executions in here, you can see, you know, which which ones are currently running, which ones aren't, uh, which ones are waiting for approval, those sort of things. And you can have a look at um, pipeline dashboard. So I haven't, I don't think I've developed, I haven't created a custom dashboard yet. But if we have a bit of a look at, say, this one, which is one I run fairly regularly. Um, we can see, you know, all our builds, our usual, you know, the duration, uh, you know, the, I don't know if this will, oh, well, this will actually bring uh, the stuff in. Yeah. So, all right. So there we can see, you know, I've got to, I haven't really run it much in the last couple of days, so I had to change that. Uh, and if we look at, you know, the last three months, uh, we can see, you know, stopped, completed. Uh, our mean time, um, uh, mean time to deliver, mean time to failure, um, uh, mean time to uh, between deliveries, and mean time to recovery. Uh, they're all there available. We can see our executions. Um, what's failed, what hasn't, if they're rolled back, corrupted, waiting, cancelled, you know, all the usual things, and any of the details of why they didn't. Um, you can see there that that required approval, but it expired, so canned it, right? Um, you can have a look at what what are the, the top failures um, in the stages, the top failed tasks. Um, again, these are the last 14 days, so I'd, I'll have to change those. Um, down and we can see there, uh, they're the ones that that one failed three times. So it gives you a really good insight uh, into what's there. Uh, you can obviously customize this form. This is the out of the box form, so you can customize that form, um, put on there whatever you want to have on there. And that is really it. CodeStream is pretty simple, straightforward. Um, it's fully integrated with the VRA suite. Um, very, very cool. Uh, what I'll do is I'll set up the next few videos and we'll actually create up, create some pipelines and actually um, go through just, you know, the simple creation of a pipeline and setting up um, inputs and those sort of things. So until then, see you next time. Stay safe. See you, bye.